everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this mini album with four signatures which are made out of envelopes. So it's really, really easy to do. So don't be, you know, kind of alarmed. It is very straightforward. I break everything down as always. But this has got a really nice feel to it. It fits four by six photos in and it will fit a lot of photos because I haven't done the photos yet. I will do an updated video when I have done them, but there is lots of room to be able to add more tuck spots and everything. So in each signature, so here's one signature here. Within this, you can have eight six by four photos. But if you want to have a tuck spot here and then a picture mat, or photo mat, then you can have even more. So it opens up and then it opens up again. So you imagine once you've got all your photos, but you could shrink them down and you could have the little mini um, two by four or two by three and a half, I think it is. Two and a quarter by three and three quarters, something like that. You know the ones I mean, the little kind of um, instant ones that you can do. You could put them in there as well. And you can see where I've stitched each signature and it's all nice and neat. That one there folds like that and then the next one and so on. So there's four of these each holding, holding eight photos. However, you can very easily increase that. So there's all of my signatures and then I've got another tuck spot in the back and it's got all these fun little cards here for journaling. I've used dies from this set of the Sassy Crafting, which I'll share with you in a moment. And then if I just bring it up closer, you've got all this fun stuff on the side. I've got the cabochon there. I've got a little wand. They're not particularly Halloween-y charms because I haven't really got any, but I've got a padlock there and it's silver and I've got a black feather. And then on here, really love this. So I've got this holographic spider. Happy Halloween. And then these are all cutouts and this skull and crossbones, which I just used some Winker Stella just to make it sparkle. It's just really come together lovely. So I'll just quickly show you the collection. So this is Sassy Crafting's Halloween collection. So it's 12 by 12 paper pad, you get the stickers with the dies, okay, so those will cut out all those pieces. These are what I'm going to use inside the album, so once I've added photos and I can do more of them. There's some of the dies which you've seen, the spider I love, even though I absolutely can't stand spiders, but I just love how that's come to, I love that the centre's cut away. And then you've got a brilliant sticker book which is going to be used on my photos as well, so many fun puns, love at first bite, you look, fa you look fantastic. You've got the pad, oh there's a padlock there actually. Trick or treat tags, there's loads of fun things. And then these cut aparts, okay, and that's, you can see some of them that I've used there. And then the papers. So yeah, really fun to do. This is gonna hold Halloween photos over the years. I'm gonna take a selection of my favorites and keep them in this little album because there are some fun ones. And uh, yeah, I will show you those again in due course. But for now, let's get into the tutorial and let me show you how to make this. Okay, so I've already done three of my signatures here. Now, when we get to this point, it's entirely up to you how you have them fold out. So I've done my three holes here where I'll be sewing in the center, but you can do it here and have these three fold in and that one like that. So that is the front of that piece and then they open it and then it comes out that way. For me, I'm having them fold in like that. So there, you know, you open it and then they both come out either side. So it's entirely up to you how you do it, but I've already done the three there. These are very strong now because I've used my cloud glue and obviously there's lots of layers. Now each of these signatures holds eight pages. Okay, front and back. So you do fit a lot on here and you also have a pocket here. So if you've got any kind of tickets for something or just little bits that you want to kind of remember and keep, then that's a really nice little pocket for them then there. Okay, so to make one of these, you need two C5 envelopes. For, so if you're going to do exactly the same album size as me, then you will need eight of these. I got these ones here from Sainsbury's and you get 50. So I've got, you know, so many there. And um, yeah, they get used for the, the normal use and you know, craft ideas as well. So all you want to do is very, very straightforward. You're going to have one with the sticky side up. These are already got their um, the gum on them, self seal ones. But don't worry if they're not because you can add glue to them. And then this one, you're going to pop inside, very similar to the other envelope album I've done, and just push it in. And you basically want to line up the fold here with the fold on that one. So you just want to overlap them perfectly. Now, because mine have already got the gum, I'm not going to add any glue, but what I would say, and this one is the one that is the pocket that I showed you, so keep that one. But if you just push down now, if you do have self-seal, that will, you know, seal it up. But if you don't, then you want to run some glue underneath that flap, okay? 
Then if you fold it over, be careful not to push it too much because you don't want that to stick because we're going to cover it in a moment. And then all you want to do is fold in each one to that centre fold. So fold that one in. And because you're working with this paper, it's very, very easy to do. Again, don't push down too much here. Just line it up and then push more to the left just to get that all in. So now you can see there's my page. So now each of these are about six and a half by four and a half because my mats are six and a quarter by four and a quarter. So you need eight of these, any colour you want. And then basically when I print my photos, my six by four photos, they will have a black frame because it's a Halloween themed album. I just thought that looked quite good. So eight pieces now of six and a quarter by four and a quarter. And these will sit on each of these sections and you will have the same border. Now with this one with the pocket, because my pocket slightly curves down, when you add your glue, try not to cover that so it sticks. I mean, if it closes it's, and you're not bothered, you don't need it, then that's fine. But you'll see there how that pocket now opens. So I'm gonna go and stick all of these down. Okay, so that's that now all ready and everything folds in how I want it to. So next you wanna make your hole. So depending on where you're doing it, so if you do wanna have it fold like that, and then like that, then this is, this one here, this crease, is where you'll want to do your holes. But like I said, I'm doing mine in the centre, so I've got that pocket there. So mine are going to go along this centre crease here. So I'm going to use my screw punch here. So you get three sizes. You get large, medium and small. I'm using the smallest. And then you want to just do your first hole right in the centre. So if you want to use a ruler, then you can do. I have already done mine, so I'm actually going to just because this is what I'll tell you to do next. When you find whatever one you're starting with, find the center point, and then from the center point, you find the center point from that section, and then that section there. So you'll have three holes like this, all equally spaced apart. Once you've done them, you then wanna just sit it over the top of the next one, like so. And then with a pen, just Draw a little dot through there, and then you can just use that as your guide. At least that way, every single one will be perfectly lined up. So you can see where mine are. I'm just going to make sure I get them on the crease, but in terms of their spacing, they're, they're perfect. So, just punch each one. Okay, so do that on all of them. Now, you may want more signatures, and that's fine, but the album I'm making will fit these four and you'll see how wide the spine is going to be. And you should have all of your holes all on the spines there and they should all line up because that's where we're going to be doing all of our stitching. Okay, so next you need to make your case. So I have here some two mil chipboards. It's nice and thick. It's the one that I use from Every Crafts a Pound. So you want two pieces that measure four and three quarters by six and three quarters, okay? That's the front and back, and then your spine is one inch by, again, six and three quarters, okay? Now, my paper here is from Sussy Crafts, and it's this really, I want this one here. I've decided to go for these lips or fangs. Yeah, lips with the fangs and the, the blood there, so I thought that looks uh, quite cool. And this is seven and three quarters by 12, okay? And then we need to stick all this in. So first of all, you want to line it all up and you want to, we're going to stick the centre down. I did put double sided strong red tape on this but then I thought I think I'm going to use the Kalau just because again that dries nice and um, stiff. But this um, shouldn't absorb too much because if it was a water based glue this chipboard would just suck it up like a sponge. Whereas because this is a solvent based it should be a bit more resilient to that. So you want to sit it so that it kind of sits all with an even kind of top and bottom and side with your front and back and then your spine needs to sit in the middle. Now I've worked it out that if you lift the spine up you've still got a bit of room there so you shouldn't get any cracking at all. Okay so what you want to do first of all is stick the spine down because if you get that in place then you can work back from those other two. So I'm just going to take the backing off of this but I'm also just going to add, let's just finish the last of this bottle. Just this will give me a little bit of wiggle room as well. Don't worry if it's a little bit off, but keep everything straight. I'm just going to flip that over. And just apply some pressure there, make sure it's all nicely stuck down. And then you want to do the same with these. So let's do, I'm going to use this new one now. I don't know what else I should have used. I've got the book binding glue, which I keep forgetting to use. So when you lay this down, make sure it's in line with your spine 
and again you should have I've got there let me just tell you my gap so it is so this is two mil this is a five mil gap okay so I've got plenty of room for that spine to be able to for the size to be able to fold up and there still be a little bit of space if you're in inches it's just under quarter of an inch okay so again just going to flip that over just make sure that glue spreads out but yeah I've also got the Kalau book binding so um, maybe I'll use that one on the other side because that is obviously for the book, so you won't get warping and and all that uh, horrible stuff going on. You want everything to stay nice and straight. So, actually, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to keep it all the same because I don't want half. Not that it would fall apart, but I'll use that another time. I've just got to keep remembering. Okay, so I'm just going to stick the other side. And again, lay that one down so you've got the same gap. You can just bring that up. I can see I've got plenty of room again there as well. Okay, and then you want to start bringing up your sides. So I like to just bring my bone folder under and very carefully just push it up along there. Okay, just start to work it in. We're going to cut a few bits in a minute, but just going to work that up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the book binding glue for these edges here just so I can kind of see how that works. Now, what you would usually do is cut across here and then fold it all in, but because I always put metal corners on my albums, I'm never too too worried about doing that. So I just fold that up so you get like a, a square. I just kind of bring that there. Can you see where it folds over? Kind of like a square effect. So I'm just going to run a little bit of glue. Oh, a little bit she says let's just take some of that off so I'm just going to bring that over onto there and just let that all ooze out it grabs very quickly that's one thing I will say and then I'm just going in with my bone folder very carefully while that cardstock is still soft it's quite easy to you know shape so I'm just shaping it into that square shape and that's how I like to do my corners when I'm adding the metal can you see and it's completely covered and then these will come up and you'll see how you get a really nice almost like a folded pillow kind of look and then that one will come over there as well okay so just do that on all of your corners okay and then you might have already done it but just bring up your sides okay and they should quite easily fold around you shouldn't get any cracking you get a really nice smooth side there and corners all right it's quite nice actually it's worked out perfectly that wasn't even although you're not going to see all of this because a lot of it's going to be filled with dangles and stuff but look how perfectly aligned the um the lips are there that's uh quite random anyway so now you want to fold in all the sides so again i'm using my glue i'm just going to run it all down there some people like to reinforce with double-sided tape on here as well, but I'm not going to. Now, I don't have too much to go over this, so I'm just going to really kind of push it up there first so it grips to the side, because like I said, there, it is a thick chipboard, and then just keep moving it over with your bone folder. And this does grip very quickly, which is brilliant. Oh, it is nice to use you do notice a big difference okay, I'm just gonna push on the sides there so you get a really nice finish and you'll see now how nicely that's all folded around so just do that on all of your sides okay so that's now all covered and then just very carefully just once it's kind of dried a little bit just push in on there and it should all come around really nicely you, you honestly as long as you've got that gap that I said you won't get any cracking okay so that's the case there done then for the inside so this is what I'm going to have because I do like this back color and I thought it's going to work well with the black border from the pictures so this measures here I think it was seven oh no six and a half by give me a bigger ruler here six and a half by 
10 and 3 quarters. Okay, and that will sit perfectly inside there. Okay, so again, I'm going to cover everything here. And then just sit that over the top. And it should be a really tight fit, so it just literally should be revealing, I'd say, about one eighth of an inch on all of your sides. And then I'm just going to go over it, really spread out that glue. Okay, and then again, just very carefully find where you've got your fold and just try not to use any points. Just use a, a you know, if you've got a quite a sharp bone folder, you probably don't want to use that. And if you get any buckling while it's still wet, you can squash it down. So you see now where that starts to come up, like so. And then again with this side here, I've still got time, because I'm using liquid glue, to move all of that. And you get a really nice closure. Like so. Okay, I haven't got any buckling, it's all nice and smooth. You can really go in there and work it. Obviously try not to put anything sharp along there because you don't want it to cut through once that dries. There we go, you've got a perfect case and that is solid, that is not falling apart. I mean that's got, well yeah, very strong colour out in both book binding and the multi-purpose purpose solvent glue. So yes, yeah, so that's where you need to be now with that piece. Okay, so now Working within this centre pit section here, which is one inch, we need to do four kind of strips, okay? So the easiest way to do that is every quarter of an inch. Okay, if you lift up one side and put your ruler in there like this and just mark at the quarter of an inch point, then at the half an inch, then at three quarters and then at one inch. And that's your four sections and it should perfectly sit. If you see there, I've got one, got one there, one there, one there, and one there. Ignore that one, that's where I went wrong. But you've got one, two, three, four. So, like I said, coming in from a quarter of an inch with that side up. Okay, do the same at the bottom because then you can draw faint lines. You just want to make sure they're evenly spaced. So now, if I show you the bottom, that's a bit easier. See, I've got four... Then you can join up each of those lines. Okay, so now I have four lines, one, two, three, four, equally there, because there's about a quarter of an inch there and there's a quarter of an inch here before they start. Okay, then get one of these and fold it so that you've got them in like so, or however it is you're having it folded, yours may be like that. It doesn't matter, as long as you've got it open, so you've got two pieces on each side. Pop it anywhere within that for this, the minute, it doesn't matter, but anywhere on that, that centre part and make sure you've got even top and bottom. Just mark your pencil in all three of the holes, okay? So now I can see where they are. Now that one is pretty much almost on that line, but now I can just go over the others and just copy where they are on each of my lines. Cross, you're not actually gonna see these, although you can, you can rub it out. I just wanna make sure I get them on the line, okay. So now you can see we've got our holes on those lines. So now every signature, once we stitch it through, will fit perfectly. See the holes on the side of my signature line up perfectly with that and that one will go there and they will be equally spaced. Okay, so that's the easiest way that I find to do it. And then you want to punch through them now. So now I'm going to have to really push this through quite hard because it's going through a thick chipboard. I may need to have to help it along with my pokey tool as well but once your string goes through and I have all the dangles hanging off you're not really going to see it all so I'm going to go first of all okay that's actually worked and then what I'm going to do just with the last piece it's gone right through the chipboard but then I'm just going to push it through with my pokey tool and then I can just go on the reverse here and now that's gone right the way through so you want to do that now on all of those dots and then afterwards you can rub out all the pencil but you then should have three six nine twelve very evenly spaced holes on the outer part of your spine. Okay, so I'm really pleased with that. You can see they're all nicely even and spaced and everything. So they are, I'm just gonna rub out the pencil marks on this side. 
Okay then before we start stitching everything in because once we've stitched the pages in it's just down to decorating and the front cover and everything I've got my corners here so I'll share all the links to these these are the nice little decorative ones they've got that kind of little strip there where it looks like it's detached I really like that so I've got four of those actually let me quickly give the measurements here because these are the one thing I always forget to add these ones are your 16mm by it's near five, whatever the one is, because I think it's 16 by four. But um, okay, so pop them in so you've got the front on the front, obviously. And then make sure you squash them down there and you get a really nice finish on the front. So I'm just going to do that with the other four. Okay, so I've just gone and put one signature in because I just wanted to check I was stitching it right. So I am using this thick pink twine this is just some baker's twine and if you want to have the string the kind of cut off loose pieces on the outside which I do because I am going to start hanging pieces off so I put that on while I was stitching it through and I'll show you on the next one so if you want to have dangles and stuff then have it so that you can have all these bits I want that I want it to look a bit messy if you don't want that then the first stitch you will do from the inside I'm going to do my first stitch from the outside so it's just entirely up to you so first of all you want to go in from the middle so I've already done my first one here so I'm going to start with this line now the next lot of holes we're finished with this one here so I'm going to go in that middle one there and then you want to line that up with the middle of this signature here. Okay. And just pull that through. Make sure you hold off the edge because you don't want to lose that. Okay, I'm keeping quite a bit there, but you don't need that much. Then you want to go in top or bottom. I don't really, matter. I mean, there are proper ways of doing it, but for me, as long as I get it stuck down. So now, okay, there's the edge the end from the other side, here's through the middle, I'm going to go through the top and then the top of that same strip, okay, again hold off my loose piece there and pull that so it's nice and taut and you want to start getting everything lined up, as I pull that taut now that is lining up where it needs to be, it's nice and flush with the other one, okay, then Ignore this piece here, that's the piece where we started. You then, so here we are at the top, okay, there's that one there. You want to go back in that middle one again, okay. You should come right through the middle. If you have any of this overhanging, I'm going to have to trim that a little bit with my scissors because it's just going to buckle all the time, okay. And there's my needle coming back up. It's once we start pulling this piece that it will all start to really tighten. Okay, so I've gone back in that centerpiece, pull that nice and tight, okay? And then from inside here, okay, so that's that one, we're now gonna go in the bottom. And that should just line up, which it does with the bottom of that same track. Pull it up and then go back in. Now, before I go back in, I wanna thread something through here. So I'm gonna do this. I don't have anything particularly Halloween-y. I've got this big tassel I'm gonna add on. I've got a black feather. I've got this little kind of padlock. So I'm gonna pop that on there. Okay, so that's just stuck now and hanging there. And then you wanna go back in the center again and come through there. And now I've got another dangle on the side of my mini album. Okay. Then from the inside, you want to go under the bottom or the top, it's entirely up to you. I'm just going to do the bottom because it's just there. So I've just gone underneath it, okay, and then go back in the top or the middle or anyone you want. I'm going to do the top again and I'm probably going to have just a load of bows at the top. So now you've got this loose piece and this piece, so you can just cut it off, okay. And then I'm going to have something else going through here. So I don't know if that's going to fit through the whole of this. I don't think it is. So I've got a cabochon here as well, which I'm going to add some paper to at the end. So there's the piece to stick over the top. So I think I'm going to add this on. It's a shame it isn't silver. I could always change it at a later day, I guess. Although I probably won't. But I'm just going to thread that through. And then again, tie that off. Okay, so once that's got that piece on there, and now you will have two signatures in there. 
like so. And they're really tightly, you know, they're really tight and secure in there, and nice and lined up. And then this is going to start to become just all tatty, and I'm going to have that. That's a little kind of clip, so I can just clip that black feather on anywhere there, and then probably have this. I might do a hole right at the top there actually and have a chain. I just want loads of stuff on it because it's, you know, it will make it look a bit spooky. So again, get your next one. What I'm going to do with this one before I stick it in is I am just going to trim this piece. So I've still got a border, but there's, there's enough room there for me to trim a little bit off. Otherwise, it's just going to end up kind of all curling up anyway. Yeah, it just frees up now. You can see, you can see your holes much better. So it might be worth, because you can you see there it's just started to squash it. So I'm just going to trim that away. Okay, again, so I'm going from the outside and I'm now going in the middle of this one here. Okay. And then you can see it comes up there and then you want to feed that into the center of that one there. And then it's up to you whether you go top or bottom. I'm just going to go top. And then I'm going to go back in the center again. Keeping everything nice and taut, and then go in the bottom. Now, if you wanted to, you could tie it off there. So I might do this one a bit differently, because otherwise you would go, or actually, no, we can go in the middle again. No, I'm going to tie it off this way. I'm going to tie it off. So as long as you go in the middle, up through the top, in the middle, and then out through the bottom, or the other way around, you're going to have, you want to end up with your two loose ends, but I think I'm going to have the bow at the bottom for this one. A couple of heart ones that I've just put on the ends of each of those, and then we'll just tie this off. Okay, so there's our third, looking good, and then you just want to do the same with the last one. Okay, so there you have it. So I've done all my signatures. I've got this, I love that piece hanging. And also the cabochon, I'm not happy about that colour, but once I add the pattern paper and then that over the top, you're only going to see that, that kind of frame. So it, it should look better and you'll see that shortly once I've done it. And I like the way it stays up like that. So even when the, you know, the album's kind of in its upright position, it doesn't drop down. So I like that. I've got that feather there. I might reposition it so it's there because I might just move the bow up actually. And that's a nice thing, you can move this around because there's lots of bows and bits and pieces. I'm also gonna really unravel all these pieces so it's quite fluffy. But that's the, the front all ready to decorate and I'll show you what I'm gonna use and then you open it up and you should have a really nice clean four signatures that will you know easily turn. And then inside each one, you have all your other photos. So you can get a lot in this. Now I am going to add some little tuck spots. I'm going to add tuck spots here. I might add some here because you get all of this here. So I've got the stickers. So I'm going to use lots of the stickers and they look great actually on the photos as well. I've got the stamps there. So I'm going to use lots of these sentiments around the, the photos as well. So some of the decorating I can't do until I've got it. I'm going to die cut this. I want to do it in silver because I've got the silver corners. I think a real glittery silver spider on the front is going to look really cool. And then these bits here are all your die cuts. So these are all done for you. So some of these would look good as a, you know, to actually create your tuck spot. You know, I could stick a few of them together. Something like, something like that. And then I could have actually a photo mat in there with, you know, pictures to go on each side so then you maximize it even more so I'm gonna have a play around start putting this all together and decorating it because that's the fun part for me and then when I come back and talk you through it all and any other measurements there might be and uh, yeah then I'll be done but I've really so far so good it's a lovely nice chunky little album okay so I've done as much as I can without having the photos in because there's more that I want to do on top of the photo so I'll just bring it up a bit closer so I've gone and frayed all of the ends I've added this was actually one of the stickers which fitted the cabochon perfectly so it's that moon one there so I've stuck that one in there and then just added some of the Kalal clear glue over the top and that's now dry you've seen that I did add the leaf as well just for a bit more texture and then on the front here I've got some feathers and then some of this um, there is a name for it, I always forget. It's this stuff here, I picked it up from the charity shop and there's absolutely tons of it on there, but it's nice just in the background, you just kind of roll it up. Um, I've used the spider, which is one of the dies, so this one here, and the skull and crossbones, which is this one here, and then these are all the cutouts from this pack here. So I've got lots more for inside, 
and the spider, yeah I said that. The Happy Halloween is also one of the stickers, so you get two of each, there's one along the bottom there and I just put it on some of that holographic cardstock, I just think that looks really really cool. You've seen all the edges and then inside I've done a tuck spot here, so this one measures two inches by four and a half. And then I just put a layer on top if you want. I've used another sticker, used another cut apart, and then these are on one of the paper sheets. So you get, this is your 12 by 12 paper pack, and one of them, oh, it's a double sided, you get one sheet of each, and this was double sided, so I've cut it already down. But you get all these pieces here. So these are great for journaling, and I might put little photos on them as well. So for the minute, I've put them in here, but I love all the things like if you've got it, haunt it, stay spooky, love at first bite, creep it real, um, trick or treat, brilliant. I've got a really fun um, photo of me dressed as a zombie nurse. So um, I will do an updated video. I have promised I have got my other mini albums to show with the photos in as well. And then that's all the, the pages. Okay, and then at the back I've done the same tuck spot again. And then with some of them, rather than cutting them all down, I've kept them so they're like a little book. And again, I've used the bat, which is this one here. Now I will use these and the stamps because these sentiments and things like that are gonna look good on the photos. So they will get used for that, along with all these cutouts that I've got left and the stickers, because that sticker book is gonna be brilliant for the, let's pop that one back in there, just sticking out the top, and I've also put the sticker there. You can do something on the back as well, but the, the sticker book, there's so much in there, and you've got strips as well, which are just gonna look really nice around the photos. You've got the snake, you've got tiny little bats and stuff. They're really gonna bring it all together, so I'm looking forward to using that. This is, you know, I am probably will end up using all of that there. This is all my stuff that obviously I can keep forever, but this here will all get used within this mini album. And I love it. It's got a real nice feel to it. It's nice and chunky, but it's still got, you know, it still goes in enough there. So once all the photos are in, it's probably going to come out to about there, I would have thought. So it's going to be a nice chunky piece and I could still add a clasp or something on there if I wanted to. But I'm really pleased with it. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. I hope I've, you know, simplified that signature and the stitching and everything as best as I can. And yeah, I hope you enjoy making your own one. So thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed today and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.